all the time. We are family. Outstanding effort again. We're busting ours to kick yours. That's big time. Minus 15. Respect all, fear none. Oh, did he felt that one? Intensity is not a perfume. It was a no doubter. Five, four, three, two, one. We are up in the bird's nest here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. I'm Brendan Mortensen alongside Matt Bonaparte and alongside another whiteboard. This is uh, another fantasy draft in the span of two weeks. The haters said that we couldn't do it again, and the haters are now furious. I never heard that. The haters are furious. Nobody ever said that to Everybody me. was saying it. I all I heard is that shouted I, at in the streets. All saying, you I won't do another fantasy draft. The only thing I heard is that I won the last one by a landslide. You, you did. Well, landslide's a strong word. You did it's win not, the last not one. Not a strong word at all. It was. I'll, I'll chalk it up to beginner's luck. I'll and chalk it up to I studied work. hard. You did, you and did. I got the last pick, uh, which helped a ton. <laughs> <laughs> which helped a ton. Yeah, it did. It, you made the suggestion too of putting our uh, each player's war next to the draft pick on the graphic, which would have been yeah, tough for you. I'm just a I, charitable person. For me. At the end of the day, I just try to help those around me, and yeah. you know that's how I succeed in life. Yeah, sure. Well, you did win that fantasy draft. Kudos to you there, Bones. But we've got another one today. And today, uh, there are no rules. This is a lawless fantasy draft. This is draft. a Wild West <laughs> this fantasy draft? a Wild draft? West fantasy Whoa. draft where we will be selecting players that we think will contribute to the 2024 Baltimore Orioles. This is a fun exercise. We have done it a bunch in years past. And for a team that is this loaded with talent, I, I think we're, we're not going to have to search too hard to fill out two full rosters, which is really impressive. Yeah. No, I mean, this should be fun. Um, it's going to be an interesting beginning to the draft because I feel like you can go a couple of ways with it. Like, it's not yeah. like, like last time it was Cal Ripken is the number one overall pick. There's no two ways about it. Right. Now it's like, well, you could pick a couple of guys. And I'll tell you what, I do not want that number one Neither overall pick. I. And we haven't decided yet, mostly because I didn't know we were doing this show last week when we would have decided it. So we're going to decide it right now with a coin flip. Now, now you know, here's the question. Are, are we going to call the coin toss and then whoever wins the coin toss gets to choose their pick? No. Or is it whoever gets wins the coin toss no. gets the number one overall pick? I'll let you pick. Who do you? What side do you want? I think it should be now, whoever it, wins the coin toss gets to decide what pick they want. As in one or two. Well, both of us are going to choose two. Uh, sure. So how about we just say whoever, whoever wins, wins the, the coin, coin toss, toss gets, gets the two. second pick. All right. Whoever is that good with you? Whoever wins the coin toss... <laughs> Does not get the first overall. Yes, pick. In a, you know, you know, this isn't a this is a wild west. Okay, we make right. our own rules, and you know, usually you're you're coin tossing with a quarter. Instead, we have a penny. This right. is U.S. currency, and uh, I'm gonna flip it right now. You ready? Well, for the listeners at home, we're not heads. following along with us live here on Facebook and YouTube. This is why you got to tune in to see this coin toss. Heads or tails, Brendan? Tails. Never fails, they say. Hold it on. never fails. It's a tiny coin. You got to give me a second. It's a tiny coin. Tiny we're coin. giving them a second. Dear listener, Bones is really struggling with this penny. He's caught it. He's flipped it. It's Ed's. That's tough for you, kid. And just so nobody can say I'm wrong, nobody can zoom in on that, but I'll show it to you. Dear listener, he is showing tails and is bamboozling you. Oh, he's going up to the camera now. That's not going to help. That's the wrong camera. That's Ed's. <laughs> That's Ed's. Bones, sit, sit back down. We got a draft to do. All right. Enough of these... Uh, these shenanigans, this tomfoolery out of you right won't be tolerated. Now, Can't I think it's it. pretty clear how these top three picks are going to go. There yeah. are two Orioles that finished top 10 in American League MVP voting and one pitcher who finished top 10 in National League Cy Young voting. So it's really just a matter of who you want to start the draft with and who I would rather not you have as a one-two punch. You're probably going to want to take away Ryan McKenna here. I mean, end of the sure. day, that's a clubhouse guy. I think where I'm leaning is that I don't want your lineup to have both Gunnar Henderson and Adley Rutschman. So I think with my first overall pick, I'm going to go with the most valuable Oriole in Gunnar Henderson. Came in eighth in American League MVP voting last year. Had a war over six. Can put him at shortstop. Can put him at third base. 
I think year two of Gunnar Henderson after winning rookie of the year is going to be even better than the year before. And if he's even better, we're looking at a war of seven or eight and even higher in MVP voting. So Gunnar Henderson is my selection here. It was one of the best shortstop third base hybrids in, in all of baseball. So Gunnar is my first overall selection. That's the best case scenario, I think, for me, considering that while Gunnar Henderson is statistically the best player on the team from last season, if you're going by war, that is, you're also giving me Adley here, who... It was a lose-lose. It was, but I'm just saying there's depth in the middle infield while there is not at catcher. Sure. You're giving me the opportunity to take both James McCann and Adley, and then I'm going to leave you with that would be a guy ins- you didn't even put on your spreadsheet. And that would be an insane thing for you. But, yeah. you know, this is this is the Wild West, man. You said it. What, are you just declaring war? with Maybe. Selecting both not James right McCann now, and Adley Rutschman? But I will take You can take James Adley, McCann right now if I could, you want. but I won't. Yeah. <laughs> I will take Adley Rutschman with my first overall pick. The cornerstone of this franchise, the face of it, you might say. Uh, a guy who is a beacon of hope for this franchise and uh, has really uh, seen it turn around since he's been here. He's been fantastic. Uh, he's probably the best catcher right. in baseball. Throw Cor- Corbin Burns in there as well. That battery, I mean, an elite battery right there. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to beat that. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with how this first round has gone for me. And let me just cross off the two guys I wanted to cross off my whiteboard. Yeah, it, it was a lose-lose. But I am very happy with starting my team with Gunnar Henderson. And this puts me in an interesting spot because there are no clear, for me at least, no clear number four and number five guys. I think there's somebody you have to take To here. select here. I, I, I agree. And, and I'm going to start with him. And that's going to be my first starting pitcher, which is Grayson Rodriguez. Yeah. I know the overall numbers from last year, a war of just 0.9, weren't fantastic. But if you watched a lot of Orioles baseball last year, you know that Grayson Rodriguez had a spectacular second half of the season. And if that is going to carry forth into 2024, then he's going to be one of the better pitchers in the American League. So Grayson Rodriguez, I think, is, is pretty much a slam dunk here. Has to be my fourth overall pick. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't do that, I really don't know what you're doing in this draft because you can't let me have Burns and Rodriguez. Uh, that was just a no-no for you, so good pick there, Brendan. And I just want to respond to Bobby Shannon in the comments real quick. What do you got against the coin flip? The coin flip is an elite way to decide things, and coin we flip? will continue to what use it. was the it. other way? I don't know. He said coin flip? Really, guys? Yes. yes. Really. Coin flip. Who? this is a tricky selection. There are a lot of established big leaguers that I could take here. There are prospects on the rise that I could take here. Who? this is a tough, tough selection. And honestly here, I think the optics are leaning one way for me. Because if you start your draft with two of the top three number one overall prospects from the last three years, then that's just a tough look for me. So I think I'd like to start my draft with two of the top number one overall prospects from the last three seasons. I think this is an early but justified selection of Jackson Holiday, who's going to be my second baseman. I think given what we have seen in spring training, I am pretty confident that Jackson Holiday will make this opening day roster. And if he's making the opening day roster, I think he's going to make close to everyday starts. And this is a true five-tool player. I think the other places I was looking, guys like Anthony Santander, Great power hitter, good outfielder. He's not giving you much value defensively. Cedric Mullins has had a few down seasons since his spectacular 30-30 campaign. Hopefully we get a full, healthy season out of him. Jackson Holiday, I think, could come up right away and have a Gunnar Henderson type of rookie of the year campaign. So Jackson Holiday is going to be my second baseman. You know, some people might say it's premature, but I think that's a pretty good selection. I, I, I mean, I don't know if I would have taken him. If you didn't right there, but I venture to say that uh, that impulse would have crept its way into my brain because I think you probably would have he's a really, really talented player, as we all know. He's been fantastic spring training at a home run again yesterday. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a tough guy to miss. So yeah. that's a good pick. And, you know, that leaves me in an interesting spot. I could take away a first base option. I could go back to starting pitching to try and round out my rotation. I could go into the outfield, try to take some options away from you there. Yep. Um, and I think I am going to go to the outfield. Okay. And I'm going to take Cedric Mullins here. Yeah. Cedric Mullins did not have 
the best season of his career last year. But if you remember, before he got injured halfway through the year, this guy was going to be an all-star. He was fantastic. He plays a great center field at Camden Yards. I think Cedric Mullins, uh, he's probably the best player in that outfield right now, which is why I take him with that first pick. Yep. And there just aren't a ton of options of guys you can put in center field. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, you could put Hayes there. You could end up putting Colton Kowser there, but there aren't just a ton of guys that you could end up putting in center field. So I'll go with Cedric Mullins. Yeah, full season of healthy Cedric Mullins is one of the best players on this team, and yeah. he has been for a few years now. So I think that's a good selection. And now... I am going to go to first base, and I'm going to take Ryan Mountcastle away from you there. Okay. Um, Mountcastle, so good. I mean, when he came back after his vertigo stint on the IL, I mean, how good was that guy? He was fantastic, hitting the cover off the ball. I love having Mountcastle on my team, a guy with 30 home run potential every single season, uh, and he'll get some reps in a DH as well when he's platooning with Ryan O'Hearn, so I'm happy to have that bat in my lineup. Yeah, Mountcastle was a little bit lower on my board just because first base isn't a place where you're getting a ton of value defensively, so if you're looking at the overall value of the player, I don't know if Ryan Mountcastle was going to be that high for me, but... He is still a fantastic hitter, a great addition to your lineup. Bones, I'm pretty happy with the options you've left me with here at the turn. I think I'm going to keep adding to my lineup. And the first guy I'm going to do that with is Anthony Santander. Another fantastic power hitting season from Santander last year. Switch hitter. I'm going to put him in right field for right now. We know we could see him at designated hitter a good bit. Again, another one of those picks where the defensive value might not be exactly what you want it to be because Santander is probably going to get a decent amount of looks at designated hitter, might play some first base as well. But I am very happy with taking a guy who was up near 30 home runs, once again had 70 extra base hits. So Anthony Santander is going to slot into right field for me. Yeah, no, that's a good pick. And I was thinking about him instead of Mullins. Uh, I was thinking about taking him and Mullins, which maybe I should have done. Um, but that's where I thought you were going to go. Yeah, maybe I should have done that, but Hey, I mean, you got to, uh, you can't look back. You got to look forward. You certainly the can't. Um, all right here. Well, I've got another, pick? I've yeah, got another, still pick you. sorry. And looking at our teams in comparison, I think there's one place where I could really get a leg up and that's the infield. And I've got a hole open at third base. And I think I'm going to take Jordan Westberg here. Great pick. Jordan Westberg can play second base. He can play third base. He can play shortstop. And what we saw from Jordan Westberg a season ago indicates to me that I think he can be pretty much an everyday player. This is, I know there is so much hype around you know the former number one overall prospects, again, with Gunner, with Adley, with Holiday. But Jordan Westberg was a top 50 prospect in his own right. In a lot of other organizations, there is... A ton, a ton, a ton of hype around Jordan Westberg, but the Orioles are just so stacked with young talent that he tends to fall out of some conversations, but Jordan Westberg deserves to be right in the conversation with some of the top prospects on this team. I'm very happy with having a second base, third base, shortstop trio there of Jackson Holiday, Jordan Westberg, and Gunnar Henderson. Yeah, your infield is pretty darn good, uh, so I'll give you that. Um, Westberg was definitely a guy I was going to take right there, and... Uh, uh, obviously, not only a good bat, but you know, very versatile in the infield. Could you could put him, you could put any. Well, maybe not Gunner at second, but you could put the other two guys anywhere from third. You could second. put you could put Gunner at second. They tried it for a little while. Yeah, but you could put any of those guys at any of those positions, yeah. which is cool. Um, yeah, no, your infield's very good. You should be proud of that. I am, um, Thank and you. you know, I'm I'm happy. I've for cultivated you. this talent. Yeah, Thanks, good both. job, man. Um, I'm going to finish up my outfield right here. I'm going to go Hayes. Okay. I'm going to put Austin Hayes in left field. And there has just been so much good of what I've seen from this man in spring training. I can't not have Colton Kowser on my team. I really sure. want to have Colton Kowser. He's been fantastic. Hit a ball to, I think, Saturn yesterday against the, the Blue Jays. Approximately Saturn, it, it flew. yes. It was great. It's one of my favorite things in baseball when a broadcast, a guy gets a home run and the broadcast takes the center field home plate to center field cam. And the ball, you just never saw the ball. I mean, it was just of the batter's eye waiting for it to come down. That ball went straight over the batter's eye. He crushed that baseball. Uh, I'm really excited about what Colton Kowser can do for this team this year. I do think he will win that four, fourth outfielder spot going into opening day. I really feel like he's done everything he can do. Um, we Going into it, we kind of said Heston Kerstad had the leg up, but 
I think Kowser has kind of shown that he's the most talented outfielder they have uh, waiting in the wings. So I'm happy to have Kowser in right field. Yeah, those are a couple of good picks there. And I mean, you, I may have boxed you out of the infield a little bit, but you have boxed me out of the outfields here. I, I'm glad I at least got Anthony Sons on there, but Hayes Mullins Kowser is not only a great offensive outfield, but that outfield's going to play some defense. Yeah. And I think with a lot of the guys that I will most likely be selecting in this draft, my defense is not going to be up to that caliber. So I, I think those are a couple of good selections there. Interesting. Now I'm in, a, in an interesting spot here too because I don't want to miss out on the first base options. Obviously, Ryan O'Hearn is available there. I could put Anthony Santan there, there if I wanted to. That is certainly an option. I don't want to completely miss out on the outfield, but you're not really going to go with a ton of outfielders here unless you want to put one at designated hitter. There are a few guys like Connor Norby who could be infield or He's outfield on options, list. so that's a possibility for you there as well. Is there anybody in the starting rotation that really jumps out to me? I think there are a bunch of guys in a very similar category of where I would select them, so I don't feel like I have to take any of them right now. I think I'm going to start with somebody that you could have taken at designated hitter, and I just want to make sure that I get him on my team first, and that's Ryan O'Hearn. That's a great pick because I was going to take it. I thought you might that's an, designated that's a, hitter that's just a to smart box pick. me out I was going to do of that. first base. So I want to make sure that I have Ryan O'Hearn on this team. I could put him in a corner outfield if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that quite yet. But Ryan O'Hearn slots in at, at, as my first baseman. Had an OPS over 800 last year. The war was up towards one and a half. Ryan O'Hearn with a fantastic 2023. And I'm not expecting anything different in 2024. So he's going to be my first selection there. My second selection, I think I'm going to start the reliever train, and I'm going to take Yenier Cano. Yeah, I mean, that's a good pick. You went both places I was going to go. As my first reliever here, an all-star in 2023, the war was up at two and a half. Just a spectacular season from Cano. I mean, the ERA was 211. I know there were a few more question marks in the second half of the season, but... I'm not going to be disappointed taking an all-star here relatively late in the draft with Yenier Cano and his 211 ERA. So I'm happy with the selections of O'Hearn and Cano. Yeah, no, that's a good pick. It really is, both of them. Um, I was going to take O'Hearn from you and have you suffer without uh, a big bat, and so you couldn't go first base or DH. Uh, you got him, and then I was definitely, well, that was my second plan, was go to the bullpen, start to shore that up. Um, but, yeah. Good drafting by you, and now you have to talk because I have to think. Right, uh, Bones, you've got to think here. Let's run through our rosters real quick. This is a bit of a quicker fantasy draft, so nice to be able to go through our selections here. I've got my infield pretty much set outside of catcher. Ryan O'Hearn is my first baseman, and then the left side of my infield, Jordan Westberg and Gunnar Henderson at third base and shortstop with the number one overall prospect in baseball as Gunner's double play combo with Jackson Holiday at second base. The outfield, I've got some work to do in left and center, but I've got Anthony Santander as my right fielder. Grayson Rodriguez is my one and only starting pitcher right now. We haven't really gone back to the starting pitching well after the selections of Burns and Rodriguez. And then I just took the first reliever of this fantasy draft in Yenier Cano, the 2023 All-Star. Bones, how about you break down your roster and then make your next two selections? I need infield. End of the day, I need infield right here. End I've of the day, got you do. the best battery, not even close. Burns and Rutschman. I've got Mountcastle. I don't even first. have a battery. Grace I've Rodriguez got... is throwing to no one right now. It's true. He's just throwing against the backstop. Right. Um, maybe a pitch back. Um, my outfield, I think, is probably going to be better than yours. Hayes, Mullins, Kowser. That's pretty solid. That's, that's hard to you've, beat. You've got good options left, like decent options, yep. but it's not going to match mine, which is something I'm happy about. Now, I do need to... I have to go infield here. I'm going to go Ramon Urias with my first pick, and I'm going to put him at third base. Actually, okay. I'm going to put him at second base. Okay. Um, Yeah, I just need him. That's important for me right now. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a gamble with this pick. And you know what? I'm reaching, but I want this guy. I'm taking Kobe Mayo, and I'm putting him at third base. I think I need Kobe Mayo on this team. 
Not a guy who's likely to make the opening day roster, but injuries happen in baseball. It's a thing yeah, he that happens every single season. With my next picks. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's really That makes me feel real good about it. You're going to take him next time. Yep. Um, yeah, Mayo, he's going to be the first call when somebody goes down in the infield, uh, and I, I'm really happy to have him at third base because and, – and you know what? Not taking Westberg was definitely a gamble for me, a risk. Yeah. But I'm okay with how it turned out with Urias and Mayo. Those are – Urias, a fantastic defender, of course, as we all know, a gold glover. And Mayo, an incredible bat whose glove is getting a lot better. And Urias, a guy who can give you a mid-700s OPS. So I'm plenty okay with that. I think this turn uh, of the uh, the draft board is pretty solid for me to shore up that infield. And I'm happy with my team right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think those are two good picks there in Urias and Mayo. Mayo was under strong consideration for me to be my designated hitter with my next two picks, because I also wanted to box you out of third base a little bit. I think that would have been fun. So those are two good selections there with Arias and Mateo, and you've shirt up your infield a little bit. I'm going to shirt up my catcher spot just to make sure that you don't take James McCann on the turn. I was thinking about it. It's a solid, <laughs> look, it's a, James McCann is a solid designated hitter option. This is a great platoon bat who mashes lefties. He is, I think, the best backup catcher in all of baseball, I, I would have to run through and look at the list, but James McCann is certainly right up there with the Braves dynamic duo of Darno and Murphy. So James McCann, I am very happy with having him as my catcher a little bit later in the draft here. And then a few different ways I could go after McCann. I'm not too stressed about the outfield. There are a few options that I could take. Not many in center field, though, is the one thing that I need to look at. Uh, who will be my center fielder. I could go to the starting pitching well. We've both been waiting on that a little bit because I think we're probably in agreement that a lot of those guys are in a similar category of where you would want to take them. Or I could just get the two best reliever options as well. But I think I'm going to go with... Ooh. You know what? I think I'm just going to get the next best reliever. Okay. And that's Craig Kimbrell. That was pivotal. My my bullpen is completely full of all-stars from 2023 in Yenier Cano and Craig Kimbrell. I am adding a potential future Hall of Famer there. And you know what? I know the bullpen may not matter all that much on the graphic, but it matters to me in having the better team. Hey. And Yenier Cano and Craig Kimbrell, I think I've got a very, very solid one-two punch in the Orioles' presumed eighth and ninth inning, guys. I think that's a good pick. I was definitely going to take bullpen there uh, on the turn, but now what you've done for me is make it so I don't have to worry about bullpen at all whatsoever. They're going to be my last two picks. Sure. Um, so I don't have to worry about that anymore, and that makes me pretty happy. Um, but, yeah, your bullpen is stacked. You've got the back end of the O's bullpen, which uh, is is pretty darn good to have, Cano and Kimbrell. Yeah. Um, it leaves me a couple options I'm not upset about at all, so that's okay with me, but... Still a good pick because I probably would have taken Kimbrell right there. Sure. And you had to take McCann because I would have done that just for fun. Um, okay, now I have a couple of options here. I need a shortstop. Can I ask a question? Yeah, you certainly what can. What is the last time we did this with Tim, the baseline for having to put a guy at a position seemed like it was he had to play one inning there. <laughs> so is that the same? Can I put any – if a guy has played there for a couple times – I, I think – if it is presumed that this player could play could there? be a shortstop in 2024, the rules are a little bit different than when we're looking at past stats. I think we have a better understanding of this 2024 team. So if you think this player is a shortstop, he's not a shortstop, but he could play shortstop. Let's say the name out loud. No. Okay. Why would I do that? <laughs> that's, that's insane. I would not do that. He played one game at shortstop last year. One game. It's an X from me. He played another game at shortstop in 2021 does, in college. Does this player project to play shortstop at any point at the big league level in 2024? Probably not, but he no. could. Vito. That's ridiculous. I, I mean, I am now in protest. <laughs> um, but anyway, I will move on. If it's not that. a player that we think of as a shortstop, it's a veto from me. That's ridiculous, and we'll move on. <laughs> um, I... You could put Jorge Mateo in center field, so I have to take Jorge Mateo. Jorge Mateo will be my first pick of this round. He's going at shortstop. Um, a guy who's got a fantastic glove, and he put together a pretty solid performance in ALDS game two. Um, and he's fun. 
and I like him. And he wears good jerseys in the clubhouse. He's always rocking a good jersey. Last time I saw him, he was wearing a LaMelo ball jersey. That's a solid And I was like, look at Jorge, dude. Mateo. He's just rocking a LaMelo ball jersey. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's good Jorge. scouting right there for me. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? There, there's two options I could go here, obviously. As you look at my board, it's starting pitcher or DH. And I'm going to have fun. I'm going to take Heston Kerstad and put him at DH. Sure. And I think that's a good pick because now you can't have him. And your your out, outfield just got that much worse, and I'm happy with that because Kerstad also is a fantastic player, uh, a great hitter, and he could make some real moves. My team now, maybe your your infield certainly is better than mine, yep. but I'm very happy with how my outfield, first base, catcher, and DH has gone. I think I win in all those positions. Sure, um, and we're pretty happy there. And I also have a better ace, so I'm okay. It's all pitching out from here. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's fine. Uh, Heston Kerstad, I certainly did want, and I was considering taking Kerstad over Craig Kimbrell, which maybe in hindsight I should have done. But now the fact of the matter, Bones, you do not need a single position player. Yes, that's which true. Which means with my next two selections, I can go starting pitcher, starting pitcher. Listen, we've done the same thing to each other. You did that for me with the bullpen. Now, I, mean, I knew this was going to happen, yeah. but you were going to take Kerstad, and I think that's a decent trade-off. I'm happy with it. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to take the two best starting pitchers that I have on my board. The first one being Dean Kramer. Dean Kramer last year was just solid. He was just chugging last year. 32 starts. He gave you a 412 ERA. Dean Kramer just incredibly solid game in and game out. And for my third starting pitcher, I know he's probably not starting on he healthy on the opening day roster. He's just a little bit behind schedule. There have reportedly not been any setbacks with his injury. I'm going to take John Means. Okay. I know that there are probably a couple of weeks off there with Means, but even if he gives you 28 starts instead of 30 plus, I think John Means and his upside is just too great to pass up on here as my third starting pitcher. And I'm happy with Kramer and Means as my next two starters. Yeah, and, you know, you've done a good job there as well, Brennan. Pat yourself on the back for that kid. Um, you know, now I have the, the, the gamble of all gambles of whether do I take a shot on Kyle Bradish? Do I think Kyle Bradish is going to return this year and play good baseball? I mean, yeah, that that's a that's, that's a, a tough huge one. gamble, uh, and I don't think it's one I'm going to take here. I think I'm going to, while I hope Bradish does come back and play baseball, it's not something I'm going to bet on. Uh, and instead, I will go to Tyler Wells and Cole Irvin yep. uh, to try and round out my rotation. Obviously, there's that one spot left. And now Brendan and I both have to fight for it. And this is going to be a little bit interesting to see what happens here. But I do take both Tyler Wells, who was fantastic for the Orioles until arm fatigue set in for him halfway through the year last year, led the MLB in whip. I mean, that's nothing to scoff at. A fantastic player. And then Cole Irvin, who in his first start in spring was throwing 96, was fantastic, has slowed down a little bit since then. Yesterday wasn't the best version of Cole Irvin we've ever seen, but I think he's going to have a strong year regardless. So I'm happy with my one, two, three. Bones, let's run through our rosters here one more time. Your position players are set. So I'm waiting on my position players a, a little bit, but my infield is done. I've got James McCann, Ryan O'Hearn, Jackson Holiday, Jordan Westberg, and Gunnar Henderson. I still need two outfield spots and a designated hitter, but right now in right field, I've got Anthony Santander. My starting rotation, I'm very happy with my top three in Grayson Rodriguez, Dean Kramer, and John Means. And then my two relievers, Yenier Cano, Craig Kimbrell, a pair of 2023 All-Stars in the pen. Yeah, you got a good team. I like your team, but I like mine more. Um, I would hope so. I got the best catcher in baseball behind the dish. I've got a guy who could knock 30 home runs at first in Ryan Mountcastle. I've got a really solid uh, defensive infield with a gold glover and your own Ramon, excuse me, Ramon Urias, uh, Kobe Mayo at third, who could also hit a lot of home runs this season when he comes up, if and when he comes up. Uh, and then Jorge Mateo at shortstop, who plays a great shortstop as well. In the outfield, I'm really happy with what I've got. Hayes, Mullins, Kowser, three great defenders. And I've got a great hitter at DH and Heston Kerstad. Uh, also a lot of youth there. Uh, in the rotation, I've got the 2021 NL Cy Young Award winner in Corbin Burns, and I've got Tyler Wells, who led the AL in whip before arm fatigue last season, and Cole Irvin.
Yeah, it's a very solid team. And again, we're going to talk about it as these rosters are completely filled out. But just a testament to the amount of talent in this organization that we are still drafting high impact, close to everyday big league starters in whatever round we are in right now. So looking at the board, there is only one place of competition for us. And True. that is the fourth starting it's SP4. pitcher spot. It's SP4. Because I don't need any more relievers. So I, I can't draft a reliever. And there's no point in me drafting a left fielder, a center fielder, or a designated hitter with my one of my picks here. I will draft one of them. But there's no point in me really targeting any of those guys because your lineup is completely full, which leaves me with my fourth starting pitcher spot. And this is really interesting because we have selected really the, the six starters that we believe are going to play a majority of the season at the big league level, which leaves me with the choice of taking Kyle Bradish, whose outlook in 2024 we are not really sure, or one of the Orioles' top starters at the AAA level, guys like Seth Johnson, Cade Povich, Chase McDermott. All three of those guys are very solid options for me at my number four starter spot. And given what we have heard from spring training with Kyle Bradish's recovery, it seems like the hope there is that we will see him about halfway through the season. Somewhere in the summer months, we are hoping for a Kyle Bradish return. I think realistically, Kyle Bradish is back on this big league roster, assuming that everything goes well with his recovery. I think Kyle Bradish is back on this big league roster before one of Seth Johnson, Cade Povich, or Chase McDermott gets called up. So I'm fine with taking half a year, at, at hopefully half a year, of the guy who came in fourth in American League Cy Young voting last year. So I'm going to take Kyle Bradish as my number four starter. He has slipped down the board, obviously, because of injury concerns. But the war was up close to five last year. As I mentioned, he came in fourth in American League Cy Young voting. And I think if we're seeing him halfway through the year, that's probably about where you would see somebody like Chase McDermott get called up to the big league. So I'm fine with taking Kyle Bradish in this spot after the guys that we are anticipating will have a full 2024 season, or at least close to full in the case of John Means, a full 2024 season at the big league level. I think that's the right pick. I think you had some really good process there. Good job. Because um, Bradish, like you said, probably has a better chance at showing his face in June or July, whenever you said, than someone, one of those guys getting called up. Now, I do have a clarifying question again. Sure. Um, this one not about position players. If it's a guy who feasibly could make a start, yeah, can I pick him as a starter? Feasibly, he's a could reliever. Make a start. He's a reliever, but he has made starts. Are we talking spot starts, or are we talking he could make a start and go five or six innings? He started four games last year. Okay, if that's the guy you want to select, but I've still got another selection here, Bones. I forgot about that. The order in which I select these guys doesn't matter a ton because I'm going to draft a couple of outfielders here. Well, I don't need to draft an outfielder for my designated hitter spot, but we'll get to there. I'm going to take my first outfielder, and that's going to be somebody that we have seen a ton of good stuff from in spring training, has a real possibility of breaking camp with this team. Somebody that Michael Elias said, hey, don't forget about Kyle Stowers. And we are certainly not forgetting about Kyle Sowers in spring training thus far, tearing the absolute cover off the ball, hitting oh so many home runs. I believe at least as of the other day, he was leading all of baseball in spring training homers. So I am more than happy with putting Kyle Stowers in my left field spot here. Yeah, Kyle Stowers. I mean, what can you say about the guy that hasn't been said this spring training? I mean, he's been absolutely fantastic. I don't know if it's still true, but yesterday he was tied for the lead in spring training home runs. Yeah. He's a fantastic hitter. I mean, we've we've said that time and time again. The one knock against him was his lefty lefty, and guess what he did? He went he in the lab it. and he fixed it. Yeah. And now he's mashing lefties. I mean, if you're thinking about this outfield conversation, this battle. It's probably Kowser right now, but you can't really count out the Stowers. It, no, it, it feels like these five. Yeah, Hayes, I agree with Mullins, you. Kowser, Stowers, Santander, and even six with Heston Kerstad as well, and seven with the next guy that I'll select on the turn. Okay, go ahead. I'm not going to select him yet. It's not my pick. Oh, see, I've gotten all. I'm getting all the picks confused. You're all turned around. I am. I am. 
Um, I'm not going to do what I said with the four starts thing. <laughs> I didn't even know who you were talking about. It was about, Mike Bauman, if but I'm, I'm not going to go there. Um, now, just to go back and what I said before, just because I want to reveal it. It was Connor Norby I was talking about before with the shortstop thing. I knew it thing. was. I knew you knew it was. Yeah. But Connor Norby's not a shortstop. He's short not a shortstop. He's not Absolutely a shortstop. Absolutely not. He's not a shortstop. No. But he did play shortstop for one game last year, and I just want that to be known. <laughs> Connor Norby's not a shortstop. Anyway, my SP4 will be Chase McDermott. Uh, Chase McDermott, fantastic player. Uh, we've seen a lot of good from Chase McDermott. A guy last year was the Jim Palmer Award winner for the Orioles organization, uh, which is the best minor league pitcher that the Orioles have. He was fantastic. A 3.56 ERA in Double A last year. Got called up, had a 2.49 in Triple A. He was absolutely fantastic, and a guy that we've seen during spring training play pretty well. Uh, so I'm very happy to have McDermott on the team. The only question with him is whether or not we'll actually see him this year. I think he could be an effective pitcher in the big leagues, but it's about whether or not there's a spot for him. Yeah. Um, but I'm happy to have Chase McDermott on the squad. I'm going to be honest. I'm I'm a little surprised that you almost went Mike Bauman over Chase McDermott because I think uh, if McDermott yeah, I mean, gets called up, he's he's going to put up solid big I was really guys. never going Mike Bauman. I wanted to test the limits of the game, you know, and that's, you know. Whatever. I play for the integrity of the I, game, but, that's okay. but you go ahead. Anyway, um, my first bullpen spot will go to Danny Coulomb. Uh, who was fantastic last season, a 2.81 ERA, a lefty. He was fantastic. He's awesome to hang around. He's just a really fun guy. I don't know if you've talked to him. Fun guy, He's a cool. lovely fella. Uh, and, you know, he'll always joke around in the clubhouse, and I just like having a jokester. A, I think you need to have a guy in the bullpen who's going to make everybody laugh. I mean, bullpen guys are, are easily the biggest wild cards on any ball club, and Danny Coulomb is that. For the Orioles. Danny Coulomb is the man. And yeah, I like him a lot. He's also a solid addition to your bullpen here. He was a vital in this Orioles bullpen last year. He went from somebody that we didn't really talk about in spring training and leading into the season. I don't think I had him in my opening day bullpen. He was a late trade. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what the bullpen looks like without Danny Coulomb in 2023. So I think that's a great selection there. I've got two more picks. I need a center fielder. I need a designated hitter. You took just about every center field option that you could have. Jorge Mateo is your shortstop. Austin Hayes in left. He could play center. Cedric Mullins in center, obviously, at center fielder. Colton Kowser could have played center field as well. So you took four of the five, it seemed like, were options for center field. But I'm going to go with somebody who is still undervalued. I know he may not make this opening day roster. I know he doesn't have the bat upside of somebody like Kowser or Kerstad or Stowers, but I'm going to go with Ryan McKenna in center field. Plays a very solid defensive center field, is a good right-handed platoon bat against left-handed pitchers. So Ryan McKenna, I am still very happy with him in center field as somebody who fills in as a center fielder a lot of the time. Played in 88 big league games last year, still gave you a positive war. Yeah, you would like to improve on the 677 OPS, but I know what Ryan McKenna gives you, and that's still a solid addition to my outfield here. Yeah, good player. Um, don't forget about his walk-off home run. Can't. Uh, clutch hitter. Uh, and, and, you know, another guy who's a clubhouse guy and also just a plug-and-play guy. He's ready to go. Uh, and I think Ryan McKenna, while the last outfielder picked, I don't know if you're going to take a DH, maybe take an outfielder, but... He's a fantastic player nonetheless, and I think you should be happy to have him. Yeah, Ryan McKenna, excellent, excellent vibes guy to add to this team. I'm going to draft another good vibes guy here as my designated hitter. We talked about Kobe Mayo and how well he has played this spring despite not maybe being in the opening day roster conversation. And I'm going to pick the other guy who has been in that sort of realm as well. We're playing really well in spring training, but just can't seem to find a spot for him. And that's going to be Connor Norby as my designated hitter. Are you sure you don't want to put him at shortstop? I, I, well, I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Connor Norby, primarily a second baseman. He has gotten some work in the corner outfields. If you wanted to take Norby in a corner outfielder spot, Bones, that would have made more sense. Play but left. Connor Norby, as my designated hitter, I am more than, more than happy with. This is somebody who had 64 extra base hits in AAA last season. He is an absolute doubles machine. He hit 21 homers. This is not your prototypical second baseman. This is a power hitter at second base. Somebody who profiles with 20-plus homer potential at the big league level. And he's going to hit a lot of doubles as well. So once Connor Norby finds a start 
finds a spot, excuse me, on this big league roster, he is going to contribute. But I am thrilled to be adding somebody with an 842 OPS at AAA Norfolk as my designated hitter in my lineup. Yeah, very good player. Uh, I thought about him, of course. And uh, yeah, you add out or you round out your team by adding a very, very tremendous talent in Connor Norby. And when he hits the majors and, like you said, finds a spot on this team, he will be very good. He will be. Um, so, yeah, you should be happy about that. And you have a pretty solid team over there. Now, yeah, I'm happy about my team. With my last pick, I think I have three options here. I can either take Dylan Tate who was very good in 2022 at a 305 ERA and has his velocity back, it seems, already in 2024. Excuse me, almost at three. Um, is probably going to play pretty well, but it is a little bit of a gamble. I mean, a guy coming off a year-long injury, weird situation. I don't know if I want that much of a question mark, though I still might take him. The other option, CNL Perez, who I think is going to be really solid this year. Um Whenever I think about CNL Perez, I always go back to that strikeout he had against Jordan Alvarez yeah. in Houston where he was throwing like 100 and his pitches had a lot of movement and that makes me feel good about him. Um, I don't know if I'll take him. And then the third option is Mike Bauman who had a 3.76 ERA last year with 10 wins. Weird 10 wins. Weird 10 wins. Um, who actually, if you look at his expected ERA, was below his actual ERA, meaning he was a little bit unlucky on the mound. Yeah. And he's looked really good. Uh, so... I don't know if Mike Bauman's the option. So those are my three options. And you know what? I think just to vary it up, I'm going to show faith in the guy. Give me number 55, Dylan Tate. I'm going to take Dylan Tate. I think he's going to be super valuable for this team out of the pen. And if he can regain that form, and I'm clearly betting on that he will, if he can regain that 2022 form, the Orioles' bullpen... It's going to be pretty darn good once again, even without Felix Bautista. Yeah, I think that's the correct selection there. Dylan Tate, the last time we saw him healthy in 2022, had a whip below one. It was at .991. The ERA was fantastic, as you mentioned, and he dominates right-handed hitters. Right-handed hitters do not have a prayer against Dylan Tate. And when you look at your bullpen, you've got Dylan Tate, who's fantastic against righties, and then you have Danny Coulomb, the left-hander. So if those were your only two options out of the bullpen, You'd be feeling pretty good about that one-two punch. But we filled out our teams here, Bones. And look, for the last picks, being Connor Norby and Dylan Tate, two guys with very high upside. I mean, we've already seen the upside from Dylan Tate. Connor Norby has a ton of upside. Dylan Tate, already an established big leaguer. These are two very good teams that we have comprised here, just of the amount of talent that the Orioles have. Yeah, when I look at my team... Break down your roster for us. I'm there. pretty happy with my battery of Burns and Rutschman. Um, my rotation definitely is a little bit less good than yours, uh, but I'm still pretty happy with it. It's I think a, I have a lot of talent solid rotation. Over there. Yeah, and the thing I'm most happy about is my outfield DH. I mean, I'm really, really happy with that. How that went. Mullins, Kowser, and Hayes in the outfield is absolutely tremendous. The best way that could have gone, I think. Unless you get Santander there and you put Kowser at DH. But I'm pretty happy with Kerstad at DH, too. So I'm pretty pumped about that. I didn't get the exact infield I was maybe projecting before we did this draft. But to end up with Kobe Mayo at third, Ryan Mountcastle at first, in a great defensive middle infield, I'm really not upset about it. No, I I don't think you should be. And if you're following along on YouTube and Facebook, as you should be every Wednesday live at 11 a.m., you can see our beautiful whiteboard here. And you can see Bones' team... As you mentioned, the outfield really stands out. Hayes in left, Mullins in center, Kowser in right. You got Corbin Burns on the mound, a solid bullpen in Danny Coulomb and Dylan Tate. Adley Rutschman, Ryan Mountcastle in that lineup as well is going to be huge for you. Taking a look over to my team, in the infield, going around the diamond, I've got James McCann at catcher, Ryan O'Hearn at first base, and then my infield is just really exciting from there. Jackson Holiday at second Jordan Westberg at third, Gunnar Henderson at shortstop. I am very, very happy with having those three on the team. My outfield, you definitely had me beat there. I've got Kyle Stowers in left, though, who has been tearing the cover off the ball in spring training. Ryan McKenna, who is a defense speed first center fielder, great against left-handed pitching in center field. Anthony Santander in right. I've got 30 home run potential in the middle of the infield there. And then Connor Norby as my designated hitter, another guy who could hit 20-plus bombs at the big league level. 
My starting rotation, Grayson Rodriguez, Dean Kramer, John Means, Kyle Bradish. Even if it's just a half a year of Kyle Bradish, we're hoping for as many games as possible. Very happy with that starting rotation. Then I've got a couple of all-stars in my bullpen from 2023 in Yenier Cano and Craig Kimbrell. Good team. I like your team. I like mine better, but I do like your team. I think it's two good teams. Um, I think there are two good teams. This yeah. will be a more interesting Twitter poll for sure. I think I'm, so. I'm excited to see what the, what the people think about these two teams. We definitely have each other beaten in certain spots. Right. Um, and it'll be It's really just see. a matter of which position groups get valued more. Yeah. Because you've got me at catcher. I've got you in the infield. You've got me in the outfield. And I think I've got you pitching-wise. So it, it's really how are people going to value those certain position groups? It's true. And what are and really what are the gaps between some of these players that we tend to kind of lump together when yeah. we are talking about this roster? Ryan O'Hearn and Ryan Mountcastle, I think, get equated because of their offensive numbers. What do fans think the gap is there? Kyle Stowers and Heston Kerstad, two guys that profile similar similarly in the outfield. How are people going to value that? Grayson Rodriguez, what do we think the upside is there? So a lot of, I think, interesting thoughts to to have going into this vote. Yeah, and I think we also made some key picks in situations where each other would have stolen something. Like, I really wanted to have Burns and Grayson. You made yeah. a good pick there. And I'm yeah. glad I took Kerstad because I'm, I'm glad how my outfield This was more was. of a... I think we were both playing offense a little bit rather than defense. Yeah, for uh, sure. Because I think we both sought out trying to box each other out of positions. It would have been really hilarious. Rather than <laughs> playing defense on one another and trying to prevent the other one from doing that. I did want to take James McCann. I know you did. <laughs> I know you did. That was a defensive pick for me. That would have been sure so funny if James I had McCann. James McCann. But I think that'll just about do it for this week's edition of The Bird's Nest. Thank you so much for tuning in live. If you were commenting along on YouTube and Facebook, we always appreciate the comments. We always like reading them unless they're mean. If you didn't follow along with us live, you can catch us after the fact on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts or digital shows. You can find myself and Matt Bonaparte here on The Bird's Nest. Next time we're doing this, Bones, we're going to be just a day away from opening day. Yeah. We're going to have our 2024 season preview. We're going to give predictions for the most valuable Oriole, maybe throw out some hot takes. Who's to say? Make sure you're tuning in live next week at 11 a.m., same time, same bat channel. Big thank you to Amy Jennings behind the scenes for producing this one. For Matt, I'm Brendan, and we'll catch you next time.